All right, just a quick update from yesterday with um, the firmware release notes that came out today. Um, I updated the Rec 7A last night before I posted the video. I hadn't noticed the, the settings until somebody pointed it out. So it's set up the same as yesterday. RSAT um, 2, PPM, into Rec 7A, EX Plus out, into Central Box, and then the RSAT 900 into RX2 with EX Plus, and then a servo plugged in on channel 13 on the central box. So if we turn the model on and wait for it to even to come online. Receiver bound. All three ticks. Initialized. Armed. And we go into device explorer. So for the device explorer for the Rex 7A, we're going to configuration. You need to go through the quick wizard, uh, the quick wizard before you see airplane settings and stabilization settings. They're disabled until you've done this. So, um, one thing to note is if you change anything in here and you go all the way to the end of the wizard, it puts it back to the defaults again. Something to be aware of. So if you're going in and changing things and you're moving things about, you need to go back and check all your assignments again, which is what I'm just going to show you in a second. So airplane assist, it's a jet. And we just go with the default position. Next, we won't bother calibrating the controls because we're not going to, it's not a fly model. I've set channel 12, which is on this switch over here on SB to the flight mode switch for that. And then we apply set wizard and go. Okay, once that configuration is loaded into Rex 7A, everything's back at defaults. So you need to go ahead and check things. So all your gains will be back to zero or back to the defaults, sorry. If we go back again, and then we go into stabilization settings. This is the main thing here for this setup is to turn off the fail safe to disable assist because when you lose 2.4 signal, you don't want to output in a stabilized signal because what the stabilized signal would do in theory, or well, what it's meant to do, is if you lose signal here, it'll try and right the plane, bring it back to horizontal, potentially save you from a crash. That's um that that's the the, the, the reason that the intelligent fail safe is there for it's meant to save your aircraft if you lost a signal or momentary loss of signal. In this case, we wanted to fail over to the RSAT 900 and not do that, so we'll disable the assist. And we go back a page, double check it's saved, yep. And then channel assignments. So we want to just check that's all. We would set that up there. Advanced properties, we want to change output period to auto. Um, because that's going to be done through the central box. Make sure your number of PPM channels is set to the max or perceivably what you're you're looking to uh, control. In this case, I've went for the full 16. You want to make sure stabilised EX bus is ticked because that is what's been sent out to the central box. Um, all the other settings in here um, don't really matter at the moment. Fail safe, make sure that's disabled because it's done by the central box. Alternative pin configs, this is um, what gets set back to default. So as you can see, we've got E1, which has been input from PPM in. So we need to change that to PPM in. PPM input there and E2 should be set as EX bus because that's what we're outputting and so we want to save that and then any other sense let's just double check that we've got nothing else and it goes back in again in the configuration fail safe alternative pins double check the receiver output does it look does it look correct uh, it's well, Jetty sets the groups automatically, we can muck about that if you want. But anyway, the main thing is, my aileron, uh, fake aileron servo is connected on channel 13, which is correct. Go back here, and then we'll just double check the settings of the, uh, the RSAT. So the RSAT is set up as PPM positive out, which is what we're expecting in, uh, to come in on E1 uh, on the Rex 7A. We're going to general settings, 16 channels, output period auto, direct, which is uh, as spec, fail safe obviously disabled as we talked about before receiver outputs that should be exactly what we saw a minute ago and we go back again and then the last one is the rsat 900 so the rsat 900 uh, once it loads general settings auto 16 direct back again fail safe so sorry fail safe should be obviously disabled again and then the alternative pin config so in this case we're outputting on you one Output EX bus into the central box, and then from there that will give you your, your backup signal in. As you can see, the RSAT 900 is a little bit more fancy than the uh, the RSAT 2. Maybe a bit more processing power, I don't know. Um, but certainly within the, the RSAT 900, you can hit, there's four connections you can have in, so you can have you know servos connected directly to it, etc. That you only want to you know. You, 
there's more variety, put it that way, and more configuration options. So if we okay at that, uh, check the central box. Do, do, do. General settings, so output periods, so auto, auto at the moment, which means it'll just, it'll match what the, it'll match um, what's coming out of uh, the transmitter, I'm sure, feel free to connect, uh, correct me anyone if I'm wrong. Um, you can change the output period, etc. off that, so that's setting uh, 100 hertz on the transmitter. Uh, the expander settings, you don't need to worry about that at the moment. Um, fail safe, that's where it's actually all the magic's going to happen. So after one and a half settings, it will go into hold mode for everything else, which is what I'm expecting. So if we go back, um, back in here, and if we do a refresh now that we've set it up again, it will go out and pull all the settings. And as you can see, the center box has suddenly moved from the RSAT 900 back to the Rec 7A because it's now got EX bus. If we do another refresh, well, actually, it's found it anyway, the RSAT 900. So when that fails over, when you lose 2.4, the central box 200 should suddenly appear under the RSAT 900 because that's where it's suddenly seen it from. But at the start, as you've seen there, it was under the RSAT 900 because the EX bus um, wasn't selected as the output mode from the Rec 7A, so it, didn't, it couldn't see it, essentially. So anyway, if we go back into settings, we've got dual pa uh, double pass set up, which means that each transmitter module within here, each 2.4 transmitter module is bound to a single single receiver. So one is bound to this, and the other one is bound to this, which is giving you your um, kind of fail, well not your fail, uh, your diversity in some ways, but as it's been pointed out by Sander and other people, that to do it in clone mode, which means it's just output to both at the same time regardless, alternating between the two of the two transmitter modules inside, which is in hindsight probably a better way of doing it, because it at least gives you a little bit of separation or maybe orientation on the um on the um the antennas and the aircraft as it's going through any maneuvers and things so anyway as we go back into here so test let's disable the primary so well before we disable the primary let's double check it's working so at the moment um i've turned off the gyro nothing's happening still got full control of the servo turn on the gyro rock the aircraft yep it's working fine and then I go in here and disable the primary, which means it's turning off here. Yes. And that will beep. Is it still putting a gyro signal? Yes, it is. Do we still have full control? Yes, we do. So that's what we wanted. If we go back in here again, change it and disable the everything except the 900. So this is where it failed the last time, as in there was no control, unless I pulled out the uh, receiver. So turn everything off. Do we have gyro output? No, we don't. Dead. But do we have 900? Yes, we do. Which is, we've just shown here, so 2.4 is dead, 900 is working. Jobs are good, I think. Um, it'll work as described now. Um, if we want to test the full failover, um, oh, sorry, the full fail safe, sorry, um, which is set hold at the moment. So if I want to go in here and disable, I'll need to put it at a... Uh, um, disable transmission completely. So I want to put the, the servo at a hole position or a position that I can see that the hole is working. And we turn it off. There you go. So no transmission from the Signal DS24. Loss. It's in hold, which is what I've programmed at the CB uh, CB200, and that's Signal expected. Loss. So when I um, get rid of the loss. put it back, we we'll get full control again. Do we have the gyro again? Yes, we do. Everyone's happy. Um, hope this makes a little bit more sense. Got my head more round about. Uh, got my head round um, how all this works a little bit better. Um, very helpful from the the group um, of the Facebook group to explain how the different modes work, like clone mode and things like that, which I wasn't really aware of of how the internals are. It's I mean it's in the manual, but as a guy who reads the manual, so yeah, it's it. I've got my head more around about this more. Um, this is now I'm now happy with this setup. I was put it in the aircraft. Same with the way the Cortex is put in the aircraft as well, with the way the, fail the failover settings, because I've got a Central Box 200 with a Cortex Pro with two RSAT 2s connected into it, and then the RX2, I've got an RSAT 900, which will now work as described. So, yeah, very happy with that. Um, any questions um, or if I made a mistake, feel free to comment. Thanks.